If there is one thing we've learned throughout this whole ordeal with Red Bull, it's that if people are insisting that everything is fine and the team is in complete unity, something will usually happen within a couple of days to completely discredit that. No matter how much the leadership at Red Bull want to insist that everything is too sweet at the Milton Keynes based team, the fractures have been laid out bare for the public to see time and time again. As much as he isn't exactly the paragon of virtues, Jos Verstappen is right, this is not going anywhere anytime soon. The public is aware, the shareholders are worried, and the partners are pissed. And with more and more backlash being thrown towards Red Bull from across both the media and the public landscape, the pressure is still continuing to build. As much as Horner may want to draw a line under his own controversy, the only person that seems to suit is him, as the team continues to perform at a high level in spite of his personal grievances bringing a torrent of unnecessary additional pressure to a team that's already at the forefront of public scrutiny, being the dominant force that people wish to see toppled as with every great sporting dynasty. So while it may suit Horner to naively suggest that everyone should draw a line under it and move happily off into the sunset, that is simply not the reality that is being experienced. And for those at the top of Red Bull, there may well be a far more effective and permanent solution which could be undertaken very, very soon. Want to know why this situation at Red Bull just won't go away? It's not even just Horner, and the other teams in the paddock are lining up to capitalize on the internal fractures within in the team, so stick around to the end to hear more about that. First things first, just what has renewed the pressure yet again, with it now becoming a vicious cycle wherein the pressure rises and falls but never really goes away? Well first of all and perhaps the most concerning thing is the fact that the woman who was suspended from Rebel is preparing a statement that is due to be released this week. Clearly this will prompt an eye roll from Christian who has likely had just about enough with the internal investigation settling that there were no grounds for his removal, but those above Horner at the team, such as Oliver Mintzlaff and the shareholders, will likely see this as an ongoing coming storm that the brand may have to take serious action on. The ex Red Bull employee has previously stated her intention of taking the case to the police, and now is intending on fighting back against what she deems as misleading statements from Horner and the PR team at Red Bull. From the start, Horner has firmly positioned himself as the victim in this ordeal, with only his side of the story being represented in the light of day. Clearly the situation has been limited to Christian's side of things thanks to the closed door nature of the investigation, but with the side of the employee soon to become public, the doors may well be on the precipice of being blown wide open. This news comes among other pressures on the Red Bull brand, perhaps prompting the team to take action against the team boss in spite of their continued support over the past few weeks. This is supposedly due to boycotts against the energy drink brand, such as one over in America by high-profile women's rights activists, as well as continued public reporting on the inner turmoil of the racing team, and the fears that the employee may well take legal action not only against the team, but the brand as a whole. Add to this the sheer level of puckering at the potential backlash of a widespread public article about how the team boss and accused individual are being protected by a global brand, going as far as to suspend the employee after keeping her silent to protect him would not exactly make for a good reflection on the brand. The other major player here who has sat incredibly quietly in the background lately, likely shaking their head at all of this is the team's current collaborators. Ford, who have already made their distaste at the whole situation very well known weeks ago, with them feeling the whole situation has lacked transparency at best and completely gone against the values of their company at worst. There are, as there has ever been about this, rumours that the team boss may well be facing the sack before the next round in Australia. However, it's actually far more likely to be acted upon now than it was at the start of the season. This is due to the increased level of attention the racing weekends have brought to the team, with what feels like over half the base coverage, never mind the tabloids and wider reports, focusing in on the team for every reason but racing. The sport is currently being dwarfed by the scandal, and it's no longer just affecting Christian Horner, but has caused the whole team and the whole sport to come under a mountain of pressure. The effect of the backlash has been seen in the light of day for the first time by the shareholders and the heads of the team, so we'll see if now is the time for action. Another individual who has been at the center of attention recently is team advisor Helmut Marko, with him being the subject of his own internal investigation following suspicions of media leaks throughout the course of the Horner investigation. Helmut came out with a resolute statement claiming that he was not at any risk of being suspended, and following a conversation with Oliver Mintzlaff, he was confident that he could focus on the tasks ahead of the team as the season goes on. Helmut would shed some light on the contents of this conversation as he would say,
We had a discussion and decided that there are rumors, but they have no legal basis. I will not be suspended because it had no legal basis. Which does beg the question as to just who started these rumors and why. It seems that there's a huge divide in the Red Bull camp, with Christian receiving the backing of the Thai company owner, and Marco receiving more public backing not only by those in Salzburg, but the likes of the Verstappens too. However, these weren't the only revelations that Marco revealed, as he would go on to say something that will likely put a chill down everyone at Red Bull, as well as the Red Bull fanbase's spines. I hope it will all be over as soon as possible. The past few weeks haven't been the best of times. I was already thinking of leaving at the end of last year, but I also think we should think about Dietrich Mateschitz's legacy, what his ideas were and where they took us. We owe that to him. Clearly, Max is enjoying his time in the top seat of the sport on track, but with his remarks about Marco being the only real thing tying him to the team, news of Marco's consideration of departure is surely of concern to those at home. Max speaking out yet again recently to reinforce his stance when it comes to the team, as well as Horner brushing him off as not being the be-all and end-all despite Verstappen quite literally being Mr. Red Bull, is creating the right conditions for Horner to damn the team not only to losing the public image that it spent so long building up, but its main driver and future engine partners to boot. What will be of further concern to the shareholders at Red Bull will be protecting their assets, and that extends to trackside and factory personnel. The conditions and ongoing pressures that the team is currently facing may well have people either already looking towards the exit, or could make them more easily convinced that there are greener pastures elsewhere. It is rumored that Ferrari may well be looking to add to their ambitious 2026 project, with the team already securing a bombshell driver lineup and gaining more and more reputable staff for the team, and Red Bull may well be the next target in sight for Fred Vasseur's Red Men. Supposedly, Ferrari is keeping an eye on three key personnel which make up the fundamental engineering think tank of the team. These include Aero Development Manager David Morgan, Head of Performance Ben Waterhouse, as well as the Head of the Aero Department Alessandro Gamani. The three of these engineering minds make up the core of what makes Red Bull so successful, with the likes of Gamani being a long-term veteran of the team who has heralded successful aero packages, which led to the team's well-known ability to dominate Monaco weekends. All of this goes without saying that Ferrari will clearly keep an eye on Adrian Newey's situation, with the two long-time flirters being presented an individual landscape on which they may finally get on with what everyone's been seeing coming for years now. While last year Horner claimed that there was no chance of any key team members moving to Maranello, the landscape has changed and seemingly at his own hand. Jos Verstappen is still yet to be proven wrong in his beliefs that the team is a ticking time bomb for as long as Christian remains, and it may well be that the team acts too late on the situation and loses more than just a few members to this whole situation. What could be more likely, however, is that we're in for a hell of a week and a bit off before the Australian Grand Prix, and it is now time for Red Bull to ultimately pick a side and stick with it, for better or for worse.